everyone. We are here outside Rampton Secure Hospital in Nottingham and it is Wednesday the 1st of May. I am here to tell you about Melanie Shaw who is being incarcerated here at Rampton quite illegally. This goes back before Theresa May's forced secret trial for Melanie Shaw in 2016. Melanie Shaw was sexually abused along with many other children at the now infamous Beechwood Children's Home. Eventually, Melanie took to the streets with a megaphone telling people what she knew about Westminster and Nottingham paedophiles. Theresa May was desperate to silence Melanie and that is why Melanie Shaw was forced into a secret trial. Melanie was sentenced to two years. We know what the sentence was but not the charges or the verdict. And that is why trials are held in secret, so that you, the public, know nothing about it. It has been noticed that journalists on Nottingham newspapers will print detailed accounts of Melanie Shaw's court trials. There was also an article printed about Beechwood staff who were prosecuted for wrongdoing. But I have never found a Nottingham journalist who is prepared to print an article online or hard copy about a balanced account of Melanie Shaw, her positive points and even handed. The last letter I received from Melanie Shaw in HMP style, Melanie dated it the 10th of May last year. And in that letter, Melanie said that there had been concerns at HMP style about her post going in and out. The last line of Melanie's letter thanked me. She said, thank you for never giving up on writing to me. So that will tell you that Melanie Shaw likes receiving letters and sending them. Melanie Shaw was dragged through many court cases simply to smear her name. There were counts of sexual assault apparently by Melanie to style staff. Many of us felt that it was more likely that style staff had sexually assaulted Melanie and eventually the charges of sexual assault were dropped. Melanie was also charged with four counts of arson, that is setting fire to her bedding at HMP style. Melanie did admit to the one. She said it was a cry for help. But did anyone help Melanie? No, they did not. Melanie denies the other three counts of arson and it is believed that style staff deliberately left matches and cigarette lighters lying around in the hope that Melanie would set fire to her bedding again, which would have sent her back to court and hopefully for style a longer prison sentence. I want to come now to the 2nd of August last year. A professor, Jennifer Shaw, was asked to give her medical opinion as to whether or not Melanie was fit to appear at Leeds Crown Court on the 7th of August. And Professor Jennifer Shaw did in fact submit 
an assessment that, in her opinion, Melanie was fit mentally and physically to appear in court. When Melanie finally appeared in court on the 7th of August, people at the court were shocked rigid to find that Melanie was almost deranged. She was said to be rambling and incoherent. Her hand and arm were seen bandaged and Melanie was seen to be muttering and mumbling down into her chest that her fingers hurt. The judge, Mr. Stephen Phillips, announced to the court that Melanie did not seem to know where she was or why she was there. She, he sent Melanie back to style and ordered psychiatric reports and that particular trial was simply abandoned because Melanie was in such a poor, deranged mental state. Now, I want to know what exactly happened to Melanie at HMP Style in the five days between being declared mentally fit and healthy to attend court and five days later appearing at court deranged, incoherent and rambling, bad enough that the judge had to send her away. It's just not satisfactory. I put it to you that the fairies were not responsible for Melanie's physical injuries and for her sudden downturn in mental state. Some of us believe strongly that HMP style must have injected Melanie or forcibly drugged her to give the appearance of mental illness. At this stage, I want to tell you about Mahala McGuffey. Mahala McGuffey was, at that time, the governor of HMP style. And Ms. McGuffey was suddenly suspended. We've never been able to find out why, because no one wants us to know why. It was conjectured that Melanie Shaw was the reason for the suspension and that Ms. McGuffey had authorised this, frankly, cruelty inflicted on Melanie. That was why she was suspended. But we don't know. And months later, a Mr. Steve Pace was appointed as acting governor at Style. I found it very difficult to find the actual date that Mahala McGuffey was suspended and the actual date that Mr. Steve Pace took over. But there's something very strange that you need to know. The government holds all prison governors legally responsible for the prisoners and patients in their care. And I believe, it's only a theory, but I believe that if Mahala McGuffey left style on or before the 2nd of uh, August, then no one would have been responsible for the appalling treatment meted out to Melanie Shaw. Because Style did not have a governor, no one would have been made to answer for Melanie Shaw's physical injuries and sudden mental deterioration. So Christmas 18 must have been a very, very miserable time for Melanie Shaw. Melanie was never given the famous warm jumper that she asked for in style Christmas the year before. So it's doubtful that she was ever given the clothes and presents that I and other people sent Melanie for Christmas last year. On writing to Victoria Belshaw, head of complex needs at Style, I asked, please, could 
they confirm that Melanie had been given the warm clothes that were sent. And I was informed that to tell me that Melanie had been given these clothes, any confirmation of her receiving them would amount to a breach of confidentiality for Melanie. I have to tell you that is absolute nonsense. Style and other prisons were simply playing games with us and playing games with Melanie. So by Christmas of last year, no one had received a letter from Melanie. It looks as though I was the last person to receive a letter from Mel, and that was dated the 10th of May. So let's turn into the new year this year. On the 10th of January this year, I gave a talk outside style. And frankly, we weren't sure whether Melanie would have been there simply because Judge Belcher had said at some stage, that's Judge Penelope Belcher, who has presided at some of Melanie's court cases, Judge Belcher said that she had heard that Melanie was going to be transferred to Rampton Hospital, but no dates were given. The next important date for Melanie was her sentencing trial on the 2nd of April. At that time, there was considerable confusion over where Melanie was. Was Melanie still in style or had she been moved to Rampton? Many people rang the Rampton switchboard asking if Melanie was there was she all right, inquiring about her, and the switchboard staff could not cope with these questions, and they cut many of us, including myself, off. A lot of people were very cross. I was highly amused, and during all this chaos, which went on for weeks, I accidentally scored a bullseye. I rang the switchboard saying, Please may I speak to someone who can tell me what I would be allowed to send Melanie in the way of presents and gifts and things that she would need. The lady on the switchboard said, who? And I said, Melanie Shaw. And the lady said, oh, I don't know. Just a minute, I'll put you through to Melanie's ward. So that was how we finally found out that Melanie was actually at Rampton. We were allowed to exist in chaos and confusion simply because as ordinary people, they didn't want us knowing about Melanie's circumstances. More secrecy. At this stage, I want to tell you about Melanie's barrister. Melanie has never ever been allowed to choose her own barrister and she has sapped many. Melanie is very, very sharp and cute, mentally acute. And if, if she feels that someone is not defending her properly, she will sap them. Eventually, a Mr. Mohammed Rafiq was asked to defend Melanie. Mr. Mohammed Rafiq is a defense barrister, and there's something about Mr. Rafiq that you may not know. He is also a criminal. In 2009, barrister Mohammed Rafiq, with eight other people, were charged at Bradford Crown Court over a nine-week trial with money laundering and their parts in a mortgage fraud. For his part in this, Mr. Mohammed Rafiq was given by Judge Jonathan Durham a three and a half year prison sentence. Did anyone really think that Mr. Mohammed Rafiq, defense barrister, was going down for three years for anyone? Of course he wasn't. Mr. Rafiq 
gave the judiciary, and we'll never know exactly who, he gave the judiciary one and a half million pounds, which the judiciary accepted as a fine. It was not a fine, it was clearly a bribe. But the bribe was accepted, and that is how Mr. Mohammed Rafiq bought his get out of jail card and is currently still practicing as a defense barrister. I now want to come on to a gentleman called Professor Syed Afghan. Professor Afghan is a consultant forensic psychiatrist. Forensic simply means attached to the law. At some stage, Professor Syed Afghan was told in no uncertain terms to section Melanie so that she could be silenced forever. And at the 2nd of April court case, the sentencing trial for Melanie, Judge Penelope Belcher was handed a 40-page document written by Professor Afghan. It was his professional opinion on Melanie's mental health. And Professor Afghan declared that Melanie was not only bipolar, but also had various personality defects. And the beauty is that Professor Afghan said that if Melanie didn't get her own way, she was liable to become violent. He does rather make Melanie sound like a four-year-old having a tantrum. Professor Syed Afghan, I put it to you that Melanie Shaw is not violent and she is only mentally ill because she has been forcibly injected or fed drugs to give the impression of being mentally ill and therefore easy to section. Professor Afghan, you gave Melanie Shaw a section 22, which basically put Melanie into Rampton. You then gave her a section 37, which put Melanie to be detained in Rampton for six months, though the six months can be extended. And you can bet your life where Melanie Shaw is concerned, the six months will be extended. Judge Belcher had no option but to carry out the orders of Professor Afghan, and that is how Melanie went to Rampton. Professor Afghan also gave Melanie a section 41, which was a restraining uh, order. He declared that Melanie was actually a public danger to society. Professor Afghan, I have to tell you, Melanie is not a public danger to society at all. And you and the police, the National Health Service, the judiciary, the government and social services and prisons in this country were ordered to take down Melanie Shaw and that is what you did. So I want to come where we're standing today outside Rampton Secure Hospital in Nottingham. And I want to tell you about Mr. Peter Wright, who is the Chief Executive Officer and the Director of Forensic Psychiatry. Mr. Wright, I have two issues with you. The first concerns Melanie's post in and out. It is just not satisfactory that Melanie is being denied post in we have received letters where Rampton has actually returned letters and cards to Melanie. And some people, including myself, have received letters from Rampton saying that the cards, the greetings cards and letters are not being given to Melanie 
out of concerns for her health and safety. And I have to tell you, that is absolute nonsense. Melanie Shaw receiving post would make her feel that people cared about her. But you want to shut Melanie off from the public and make her feel that no one cares about her. And that will simply make her induced mental illness much worse. Mr. Wright, there is such a thing as the 1983 Mental Health Act. It is a code of conduct and it was written by the Department of Health. And one of those sections says that people in a mental hospital, even a secure mental hospital, are entitled to receive post in and out. So you need to tell us why you are stopping Melanie from having her post. The second issue I have with you is with money. People are sending Melanie postal orders and cash. And this money should go into an account for Melanie where she can draw on it and buy things in what looks like your very nice shop at Rampton. But we have no idea of whether Melanie is being given the money and whether she is actually buying things for herself in the shop. You have no business to secrete Melanie's money. You need to account for it. No one is suggesting that you are stealing this money. We never ever thought that your staff would do that. But we have no idea of what is happening to the money. It should not be lying in an account. It should be there for Melanie to spend. I now want to come on to your website, which tells us that you have beautiful gardens. You have a gardening area where people are allowed to do gardening. You have chickens and hens, and it all looks on the website very beautiful. You also have a very nice indoor swimming pool and art and craft classes. Please will you ensure that Melanie is sufficiently lucid to be able to partake in some of these activities. I for one would be grateful if Melanie was even allowed to feel human. It is well known by now that there is an organization in this country called Common Purpose. There was a prison officer who worked at HMP Style, who was called Claire Grogan, and she was confirmed as Common Purpose Trained. There is also a lady who is not employed at Rampton, but she is closely associated with you on your website. That lady is shown online to be common purpose trained. Common purpose is a very wicked and secretive organization which has totally infiltrated this country. And that is how the police, the judiciary, the prisons and all the UK agencies were agreeable to conspiring to bring down Melanie Shaw. They had no choice in the matter. They were ordered to do it. Mr. Wright, I need to tell you that as a nation, we are probably very grateful to you and we need to be grateful to you for incarcerating some very dangerous people in this country. You have certainly done the UK a service in that. But Melanie Shaw is not dangerous. She is only mentally ill because she has been forcibly injected with drugs. And we believe that Melanie will be remaining in Rampton for the rest of her life, however long that may be. 
Mr. Wright, the walls are beginning to crumble. People are seeing through you. Please get your act together. Get the cash sorted out for Melanie Shaw. Get her post in and out sorted. And please ensure that she is lucid enough to at least feel human and take part in some of your activities at Rampton. I am obliged to Mr. Stephen George for all his help and also to Mr. Robert Green. Mr. Robert Green fought for decades tirelessly to smash through the chaos, lies and obfuscation surrounding paedophiles in this country. Mr. Robert Green died on the 11th of April. Mr. Green, I know you're up there listening. I promise you, your work will not be forgotten. You left us a legacy which we will build on. Your name will not be forgotten or your work, and we will continue to fight for Melanie Shaw and against paedophiles everywhere. Melanie, if you're listening, we still love you. We never stopped loving you. We will always support you. You have thousands of supporters in this country, and there are people in many countries on this planet who know about you. Please, Melanie, keep your chin up. Keep faith in God, because frankly, sometimes God is all there is that we have to hang on to. God bless Melanie. Laura Thomas for Melanie Shaw outside Rampton Hospital, Nottingham. Good morning.